Hi, I'm Tom Peralta. I'm a CTS in the financial sector for IBM. And today I'm going to show you hyperscale mobility from XIV to A9000. So you'll see here that we have our dashboard, which is part of our HSM, showing performance on our XIVs as well as on our A9000. Uh, this is showing IOPS. We're going to switch it to latency. You'll see that the performance on XIV is running at about 13 milliseconds. Performance on the A9000 is running at about half a millisecond. Just to give you an overview of what we're going to be doing, we're going to be moving volumes from a, on a Windows server that are currently on an XIV. Uh, and if you're familiar with Windows, this is the, the server manager. Uh, we're going to be moving uh, LUNs 23 and 24, both which reside on an XIV. Other volumes here that are online are already on um, the A9000. So we have volumes on an A9000 as well as on the XIV. So we're going to revisit the, the dashboard here, make sure we're actually running I.O. Now, what we're going to be doing is working with these two volumes. You'll see them here. This is the one we're going to set up a, a migration for. This is one we've already set up. Uh, we'll get to that one in a few minutes. But before we begin any good migration, we want to test or uh, uh, review our connectivity. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have connectivity to both systems, both the XIV and the A9000. So we're going to check that first. That Windows host is defined as XIV56. You can see here in the HSM, when I look at the host, I can review the connectivity, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to look at the di diagram. This is going to show us uh, the connectivity to the XIV. You can see here we have ports, HBA ports on the host connected to the XIV that we're migrating off of, which is TARDIS. We're going to check to make sure we have connectivity to the new A9000. So you do that by clicking again on the host, checking the system here, going to connectivity, and then looking at the connectivity diagram. And you can see that we have HBAs here connected to the new A9000. The other piece that you need is you need connectivity for replication. The migration between the two uh, systems requires replication ports. If you've done asynchronous, synchronous, or uh, hyperswap, you're familiar with this setup. It's setting up replication between your primary system and your secondary system. So what you want to do is you want to have connectivity from your XIV, which is TARDIS, and the one that we're using as our target, A9000 is winner. So you go to your target configuration screen. You review the target page. You find the target that you're working with. And you define the connectivity. We're just checking to make sure the connectivity exists and it's, that it's available before we start the migration. And you can see it here. This is TARDIS to winners coming. It says it's connected. One of the things I wanted to show you here is that we've defined it as a standard target. It's not a, it's not a migration target. It's, it's for mirroring and on lawn mobility. And the other thing you want to review is these sync rates. There's a max sync job rate, max resync rate, and max initialization rate. The one that's going to have the biggest impact on our migration today is this initialization rate. 750 megabytes is what I have it set to. The reason we have it set to 750 is theoretically that's the maximum throughput that we can get on an eight gig fiber channel port. You would want to adjust this accordingly, uh, depending on how quickly you want to complete your migration and how many available ports you have. So we're going to look at the connectivity and just make sure it's, it's all connected. You can do that by going to the connectivity diagram or details here. And this one, for, for the purposes of our setup, we only have one initiator and one target connection. Normally, you'd have another pair of these connections set up between the two systems, so you'd have another pair of these uh, just for protection, right, or in diversity. 
So now that we've validated the host connectivity and the target system connectivity, let's take another look at our volumes. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this, this system's volume 17 from the XIV to the A9000. So we're going to be using online migration. Online migration requires no reboot. Uh, depending on your operating system, it re may require a rescan. But in most cases, uh, you can move the volume seamlessly while running production. And that's one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking the, the IOPS, making sure that we're going to continue to run production while we move this volume. All right, you can see here also on the bottom of the screen, we're running IO to that volume. You know, it's running about 300 IOPS, and you can see the latency here and the megabytes. Some of the places where you can actually incur or set up this migration, you can actually do it with a right click and go to online mobility here. You can use the actions menu and, and prompt it there. Another area that you can use uh, to set up the volume is here. And actually you can see anything with a dotted line is something that you haven't completed. So here's, a, here's an online migration that we haven't started. As an example, here's one we already started. So you can already see that we've defined an online mobility migration for that one. So we're gonna be going to that one in a second. So we're gonna set up this migration. So we're gonna click on the migration button. So we're gonna define a migration uh, for this system on LUN 17, so XIV 5617. We're not gonna do an, uh, a migration that requires a reboot. We're gonna do an online migration. So we're gonna start with that. We have to pick a destination system. So remember, we're going to winter is coming. We also have to predefine a pool on the remote system. And I already defined it there. You can either search through the list here or you can actually just search by name. So I know that the one that we're going to includes my name here, it's Tom Test. So once we um, hit apply here, there's an active button. If you wanna set up multiple migrations and have them as inactive, you can. And then you would just change the activation state according to which ones you want to run first. So you could define multiple migrations and then activate them one at a time. We're just gonna keep this button on. So what's gonna happen is if once we define the migration, it's automatically gonna to start to synchronize. So we're gonna hit apply. If everything works, which it should, it's gonna say finish task successfully. So you can see here that there's a status that 0% is how far along the synchronization is. So this is the first copy. So we're actually copying the data to the remote system. You'll see here that I can't start proxy because the volume is being synchronized. Remember, this synchronization rate or this initialization rate is being directly affected by that 750 megabytes that we had previously set. So we can wait a couple of minutes here. You can already start to see it's progressing. It's already hit 1%. These are relatively large volumes. So even at 750 megabytes, we might be here waiting for a few minutes. So that's why we already predefined this one and synchronized it before we actually started. So this one's already synchronized. So we can actually go to the second step of the process, which is called start proxy. Now start proxy will now, and, and if you actually, you can read it here, right? So this volume's ready to be, is finished synchronized and ready to move to start proxy. Once we go to start proxy, it's gonna give us a warning, right? Realize that once you start proxy, what's gonna happen is it's gonna delete the data from the primary system and we're gonna be using the primary system as a pass through only. Let me show you this on another screen though, before we do that. So we already have two of the migrations defined. You can see here that we have uh, uh, our primary volume, our secondary volume. None of these are in proxy yet. You'll notice the, the worldwide name of the volume is here. In any uh, replication setup, 
you'll notice that if you define on XIV to XIV, A9 to A9, or XIV to A9, or vice versa, when you define a mirror or a replication relationship, you're going to have a different LUN ID on the primary system and the secondary system, right? Now, when we go back here and we hit apply, what's going to happen is we're actually going to mask the LUN ID on the primary to the secondary so that the, the LUN ID should line up at this point. So I'm going to hit apply. This is a one. Once you do this, there's no going back. You, you basically are moving the, the host IO from one system to another. But we're doing it at the storage level. And, and what's going to happen is we're going to be in proxy mode. So now if we go back here, you'll see that the status of the relationship has changed to proxy. And guess what? Now the host is passing its IO through the original system to the secondary system. Now the LUN ID, you notice, has changed. This is intentional. Because we maintain the worldwide name of the host or the LUN ID for this volume, the host does not need to uh, reboot and you don't have to reapply the LUNs to that particular host. So now we're at a point where we're passing I.O. through the primary system to the secondary system. So we can actually go to, and there's multiple places we can do this. We can do it here, or we can do it here. What we can do now is map this volume on the secondary. All right, so that's what we're going to do now. So. The next step is there's an end proxy, but we don't want to do that yet because we need to map these paths or these paths that are already defined to the secondary system and solidify them to the host. So we're going to go here. We're not really adding a new host. We're just picking the XIV56 and basically forcing the IO to use only these paths. So I'm filtering by host. So if you wanted to maintain a certain LUN position for that for those LUNs, you can. Uh, for the purposes of our demo here, I'm just going to let it select auto. So it's going to just pick whatever the next available LUN position is. Uh, if you are intentionally trying to map LUNs in, in a position, you'd want to control this uh, on on the on the new system. So I'm just going to hit auto and let it assign the next available position. Now that we forced it to use this new path to the system, we can actually go back and unmap it on the old system. All right, so here we have it on the old system. We're back on TARDIS. We're back on the old LUN. Uh, the unmap function is in this little corner tab here. So we're going to unmap that. It's going to ask you, are you for sure? Yes. So now we forced all the I.O. to go, instead of using proxy, so the proxy is still defined, we forced it to use the new paths to the new system without having to uh, modify the host definition. Right? Now we can actually go to the next step. So we're going to go back here. So you want to go to your mobility screen. Notice, remember, we, we've remapped the LUN on the new system. So now at this point, we can end proxy. The end proxy, what it's going to do now, and before we do that, let's double check the, the performance. The end proxy process basically will delete uh, the, the reference to the source volume which is on the old system, which you've already moved the data anyways. And all your IO and all your data is now residing on the new system. Again, we haven't had to modify anything on the host. Let's just double check our performance. Again, we're still running IO. 
Notice as we move volumes from the old system, XIV, to the new system, you should see an improvement in performance, and that's what we're seeing here. Originally, we were at 12 to 14 milliseconds. We're now at 4 milliseconds as we move I.O. So we're going to hit Apply. So at this point, it's going to disappear from your uh, online mobility page. because it's no longer a defined connection. The volumes that were defined on the old system, if we go to that particular host, you can see here that we've actually increased the LUN count on winter is coming to 20, it went from 19 to 20, and we've decreased it on the old system here. So let's just check our performance again. Again, we've been doing this as we've been running IO between the two systems. Right. And from the host to the to the the primary and the secondary system. One of the last things I want to show you is the status of that last connection here. So let's go back to that one. You can see here it's been progressing. It's now at uh, 18 percent. Again, we're running I.O. One of the things you, you could do is um, you can monitor this uh, progression by going to the remote system and watching your, you know, down here, if you want to look at specific uh, throughput, you can do it here. Um, if you wanted to go to specific volumes, you can actually check it there. Um, but for the purposes of our demo, we just wanted to show uh, IO running on both systems. And you can see here, as we progress through the migration, you will see a performance improvement as you move from one system to the other. Again, uh, that's our online migration pro uh, process. I'd like to thank you for uh, viewing this WebEx and attending.